Praise God. Welcome to Battle Cry Sounding. What a privilege it is to walk in the revolutionary way. What a privilege it is to follow the revolutionary. Now we have found that Jesus is, was, and always shall be the revolutionary. That he is the one who is leading us forward in the way of life. Now we can't follow a set pattern of doctrines. We can't go put our name on a church roll and that means that we are sealed in heaven. But we must follow the Lamb as He leads. We must follow His teachings. We must obey His commands. We must let Him be our sovereign and our master. You know, a lot of people <clears throat> these days are cheap. Mm -hmm. They're cheap. Now what I mean by cheap is that they do not give back what they have been given. They're like thieves. You know, we live, we live in a country where you can get what they call plastic, which means credit cards, okay? And with plastic, you can go buy all kinds of things on credit. You can get yourself a whole house full of possessions. You buy these things by showing these cards. They put your card in a machine and you just walk home with all this stuff like you're a rich man. Hmm? And then every month you get to pay payments on all this premature clutter that you thought you had to have. So you get to pay for it and a lot of people get mad because they didn't work and save up their money and then make their purchase. But they took their plastic and they got drunk on the power of it. So they went around and they ran up all kinds of debts and they didn't realize how much that service charge and the interest charge would multiply what they'd actually spent. <clears throat> but being fools, they believed the lie that you can have it now and pay later. Yeah, you pay, but you pay sometimes double and triple. But anyway, aside from that, so Joe down the street has a whole house full of purchased goods that aren't paid for. But he's got them. And they're starting to get old. They're starting to get torn up. His plastic car's got dents all in the side, right? His foam furniture is falling apart. No offense against foam. And on and on and on, right? And, and Madam's, you know, $400 dress got the hem all tore out. And she's too lazy to sew it up. So she's trying to take it back to Walmart, tell them it came that way. But anyway, the point I'm getting to is people have all this luxury. They haven't paid for it. Some get disgruntled along the way and think, I'm not going to pay for this. Why aren't they going to pay for it? They wanted it. They wanted it right now. Right? They want to have this stuff. So they went and got it on their plastic. Now they're stuck looking at it every month when those bills come in. You know what? I'd rather not have anything is have to pay those bills every month. Because I don't get off on old stuff deteriorating in front of my eyes that's not paid for. But that's just me. But anyway, so they just pack up and leave it all. They leave their debts. They leave their clutter. They leave, just take off. You know, you think I'm lying, I tell you what you can look in these local papers around here. You will find so many ads selling abandoned mobile homes. Do mobile homes just drive off somewhere and abandon themselves? Huh? No! People abandon them because they don't want to pay the payments. Because they don't want to pay for this shack they got, you know, this metal box that's falling apart. The doors are falling off the hinges, the screens fell out, you know, they found out it leaked. They found out the salesman lied to them. You know, blah, 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 blah. So they just get angry and leave it. Same thing's true. They just get angry and leave this house full of goods because they don't want to pay for it. But they wanted it. Mm -hmm. Did you know that's the way a lot of people nowadays do the Lord? They get angry and leave the Lord because they don't want to pay for it. Hmm? It's all here, the contract. The terms of the contract. You get his life, you give your life. You don't keep your life. That's not the terms of the contract. You find it for me where it says, those who love Jesus will do their own thing. It's not there. It's not there. He said, if you won't take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. You're not worthy of me. 
Now we read a testimony in here of a Pakistanian who became born again was a Muslim and he went through many fires of persecution and each time he cried out to Jesus and Jesus said you're still not worthy of me. Now isn't that true? We read it in here. It was a true testimony. He went through torture. He went through beatings. He went through everything he owned taken from him. And he was a wealthy man. He went through being in a high position in the government, stripped of everything. He went through imprisonment. He went through his wife dying, his child dying. All of those things. He went living like a beggar, sleeping on the streets, on the pavement, with nothing in his hand. And Jesus said, you're still not worthy of me. Why? Because he had been a murderer of Christians. And then the point came where Jesus said, now you are worthy of me. But see, on this side of the globe, we think <clears throat> we can get by with this easy believism, show our plastic, and we got it into the kingdom. Right. Hmm? And then if we don't like it, we take off right. and leave Jesus and do our thing. Hmm? Now that's the attitude that prevails these days. That what I want is more important than the will of God. That what I desire is the reason I was born. Whew. That's a lie out of the pit of hell. We were born to serve the Lord. We were born to serve the Lord. And when you think you're doing your thing, you're doing the devil's thing. Plain and simple. You might as well just get right on the back of a horse that says headed to hell. And ride it on down, honey, because that's where you're going. When we rebel against the Lord, we become the enemies of God. Plain and simple. I don't care what we want to think, how we want to reason it out in our minds. When we oppose the Lord, we become His enemies. You read it. You read the wilderness journey. You read the ones who withstood Moses in the wilderness. They became the enemies of God and God destroyed them. God is authoritarian. If you think God is liberal-minded, you are a fool. You are not going according to scripture. You are going according to your own carnal mind and according to what the devil has fed into you. God is absolute. God is authoritarian. It is either heaven or hell. If we choose the way of the cross, heaven can be our final estate. That is, we may abide with him eternally. If we choose our own way, our own will, our own desire, we are choosing the way of hell. Because that is Satan motivating that willfulness and that stubbornness against God. I was reading in Jeremiah the other day, it said, call for all the women to travail. Now there's some that withstand prayer, of travailing prayer, it's as old as the Bible. It said, call for the women to travail and teach your daughters a lamentation. In Jeremiah, teach the daughters how to cry out unto me. Because he said, this is a willful people. A people full of their own will, their own way. Now, would we have to lament? Would we have to travail in such deep sorrow if God's people would be willing to follow him? No. It wouldn't be hard and complicated birth. And as, G as General was teaching the other day, it wouldn't be that Paul says, I have to travail till Christ be formed in you. It wouldn't be all that if God's people were willing. But because of the stubbornness, because of the willfulness, because of the unwilling hearts, there's that struggle that goes on in the spirit dimension. Amen. So the thing of it is, is as we look at the context of the revolutionary way, there is only one way to follow the Lord. And that's the way of obedience. That's the way of the cross. That's the way of not my will, but thine be done. And I don't care if every man turns aside, the way of truth remains. See, if everybody betrays the Lord, the way of the Lord does not change. See, because God has it in his power to create even a new kingdom of men and women, boys and girls. See, we think, oh, we're the only ones or, or God just is obligated to do what I want him to do. You know what, dear ones, God is not obligated to do anything. You see, because God is the creator, God is the founder, God is the author and the finisher. 
And we are obligated to obey God. We are obligated to follow God. So he says, if you don't pick up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of it. And when you have an excuse, when he's given you the call, and we all know in our hearts when God's called us, but when you offer him an excuse, he says, you're not worthy of me. And we can make up all kinds of excuses that we, in our deceit, think are acceptable. But those are excuses nonetheless. You see, when God calls, it's not according to our convenience. You read when Jesus called his disciples, it said of those that were fishermen, straightway they left their nets and followed him. Now those were married men with families, with responsibilities, and some of them were entangled in the family business. The family business of fishing. They were fishermen, and it was a family business because their fathers were in it, were in it, and it said straightway they left their nets and followed. He did not give them an insurance policy. He didn't give them a promise of pay increases. He didn't give them a promise of any kind of income. He didn't give them a promise of what kind of homes they would be living in. He just said, come follow me. You know what the Lord told me a couple weeks ago? And I had to stop and think about this. He said, when I called my disciples, I had not even died. And they followed. When I called my disciples, he said to me, I had not even died, and they followed me. So who are we when we have taken the provision of the blood that was shed for every one of us to cover our filthy, vile, wretched sins? Who are we to withstand God? and think we'll be acceptable to God. We are blinded fools. Because I really stopped and I thought about that. And I thought, just to hear him say, come follow me. And they came. They left everything. They abandoned their reputation. They abandoned their income. They abandoned their security. They abandoned their self-image. And they followed. And they had to be right there, people, in the midst of their families, in the midst of their friends, in the midst of everybody that ridiculed them and said, they're, oh, they're after that fanatic now. And it said, he said, they followed me. And I really thought about that. And I thought, there's no excuse not to follow you. Because if they are acceptable to God the Father, and they had to follow without even the provision of the blood, but only by the call, we are no better than them. And this modern thought that makes us think that God is some Santa Claus with a basket full of toys and a bag full of toys waiting to give his greedy little kids and whenever we want something we write, Dear Santa, gimme, gimme, gimme. That is fiction and fantasy out of the pit of hell. The revolutionary way is when he says come, we come. When he says this is the way, we walk in the way. We do not contend with God, we bow down, we follow God. Amen. The revolutionary way remains, the way of the cross remains, the way of Jesus remains. We cannot twist it, we cannot pervert it, we cannot change it because of the iniquity in our hearts. But we can cry out unto God to be delivered from that iniquity. We can cry out unto God, make confession of our sins, make confession of our rebellion, make confession of our unbelief, and say, God, please help me for I am a sinner. And when we cry like that, God will hear our plea. And God will reach down by his majesty and by his mercy and perform miracles in our hearts and in our lives. But when we are going to believe a lie, we are headed headlong into folly. There are no two ways to follow the Lord. There's no two ways to serve him. There's no half way to please Jesus. Because Jesus, I've told you before, we do not teach in here 10%. We don't say pay your 10% tithes. We say give everything to God. Give everything to God. 
everything that you are, everything that you have, everything that you've been, everything you desire to be, give it all to God. And why do you say that we say that? It is because that's what Jesus laid down the pattern. Jesus didn't just put a foot on the cross and Jesus didn't put a hand on the cross but Jesus put his entire being, his entire life out there to be ridiculed, out there to be mocked, out there to be scoffed, to be spit upon. He laid himself on that cross and he bore our sins. I said he bore our sins. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity.